Hello, guys, and welcome to my new podcast where I'm changing pretty much everything. <laughs> and it starts from the energy of this podcast, from the environment, from the people I invite here or not inviting. And I don't know about the name. I'll see if I can leave the name or I will change the name. This is in the discussion right now with my team. But anyways, um, welcome to a new podcast. My husband is here in the background <laughs> making the funny faces. Can you leave? It's something really personal. Funny enough, I asked my husband to leave, but um, I'm here sharing that with the thousands of you. Um, yeah, that's interesting why I did that. Well, my husband anyways will see that and uh, you are guys also. It's just uh, really hard to get it out, like to actually leave something that he was so much in love with. I love my Vegan Booty Dogs podcast. I love it. And I open it um, with the deep, deep desire to grow. Uh, to grow as the personal coach, as the fitness instructor, as the nutritionist. And I still have all those desires to keep involving and educate myself. But my perspective is switched on so many things. And in my personal self-discovery and awakening of my soul, I realize that a lot of the things that I still keep projecting to my followers, to my clients, to you people, to my listeners. Those things are I'm not in a line. I'm not in line anymore. They are not the things that I wanted to keep projecting to people because they're not working anymore for me. And if I don't do it, why other people should? So, yeah, and it was really hard actually to make a decision to show up here for you and to say all of it. I'm going to go in deep in my story of awakening right now. And uh, just I just felt like before I invite you to my new kind of a version of podcast and overall in my new version of me, I have to explain myself because I just value you guys as my followers, as my listeners. And I feel uh, obligated to just explain myself to you. Because I, first of all, was gone for a long time. I didn't make a podcast and there's a reason for that. Because I don't really want to do what I was doing. But the other thing is, I also uh, just was kind of not ready. Not ready to tell you guys what's going on really in deep in my heart and my soul. Because I wasn't sure that uh, I am complete in my transformation. And of course, any transformation cannot be complete. I mean, not any. I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't say any. Of course, my transformation not completed yet 100%. But today, at this moment, I feel confident enough to talk about that. And to talk about the real stuff. And that's kind of an invitation that I am given to you. If you wanted to keep listening to my podcast, to watch my podcast on YouTube because I'm making a video which is feeling so freaking uncomfortable because I was wanted to just do podcast without any video so to just to, to get easy on myself <laughs> to not look at the at you guys, to not look at your eyes. But then I realized that no, it's a lie. I have to do this like this. I have to show up to my people and be honest and show myself the way I am right now. Um, don't get me wrong. Nothing changed. I'm still a holistic nutritionist. I'm still vegan. I still love fitness. I still love workouts and gym. And I love to share my knowledge with you. But from the time I started my career to today... I just realized so many things on the row that didn't work well. And then I was questioning why. So today I have those answers and I 
think I know where in a direction or what type of coaching I'm going to move from here and um, where in a direction of my podcast I want to move from here. Of course, it may not mean my podcast is going to be exactly like I wanted to tell you right now, because when I start Vegan Booty Talks podcast, um, it wasn't so far away ago. I believe it was three years ago. Originally, I was wanted to create a podcast with valuable information on plant-based diet and fitness. And then for some reason, from there, it grows towards a plant-based businesses and how to be a nice business owner uh, in the plant-based industry. And then it somehow grows into plant-based athletes and then how the plant-based bodybuilders or any type of plant-based athletes are changing their diet or how they feel, what the changes is bringing through their life and stuff like that. And there was amazing people out there. And if you are sticking around for a long, a long time, you know that I ever, I overcome a lot during my podcast season. Okay. <laughs> We're going to keep going. It's so funny. Um, I just stopped my podcast with you because it uh, was a full SG card. And this is a sign that when you're trying to do something new and something really valuable, always something like that happens. So it's not going to stop me. I'm going to finish this. Anyways, let's come back. So originally... When I was decided, I want a podcast. This is a new hack. I have to do it in my online fitness world. I um, have to do it. I, but I have an accent. Plus, my English is not perfect. English is my second language, and I only know English for about eight years for now. And uh, I still do mistakes when I speak. Um, it's ridiculously stupid to open a podcast when your English is bad. Like people only going to listen to you. Originally, I didn't have any videos on my podcast. So like, what's the point? Like, why are you going to do it? Like, you know, people going to listen to your crazy bad English. They're going to unfollow you. They're going to think you are stupid. That's the one part of my brain speaking. The other part of my brain saying, no, this is a challenge. You have to do it. Doesn't matter what other people think about you. You know more than one language. You know three. And you are educated in nutrition. I am a holistic nutritionist. I have certifications and I specialize in the plant-based diet. There's no podcast like that there. People need this information. However, I'm going to deliver that. People need me. People need to hear that. So there was a bottle in my head going on and I choose to show up and I choose to do that no matter what. But if you wanted to hear that, you can just scroll down to my first podcast. It was just so bad. Like my English, how I talked, how many mistakes I did and overall, like the sound, everything, everything was wrong, but I did it. And even though it was all like that, I have so I had so much great feedback from people, from my followers, from my clients. A lot of people reached out to me and said, I love it. Thank you. It was valuable to me. So I said to myself, okay, even if it's valuable for one person, because my views or my listeners wasn't like even on thousands. It was just like a couple of hundred of people. I was like, it doesn't matter. Even if one person will hear that and change their mind in better for better world, I will do that. So I was keep doing it as much as I could. I was promising to myself post every week. So I, I was keep doing podcasts every week. And it's grown pretty fast. Like I was doing some collaboration, then I started inviting other guests. So slowly, uh, it's it's grown, and I have you guys as my valuable uh, like listeners, my valuable people. I love you guys, and I'm so grateful to have you on here. And I did my best, you know, going through that path. I was inviting an interesting ask for me people into interesting discussions, but over a last two years, I felt like there's something missing. I still have so many plans to invite so many guests. 
And then people start to reach out to me to want to come to my podcast. A lot of different brand owners in the plant-based industry, in the health industry, was reaching out to me now to want to come to my podcast. So I started to make a revenue from it. And I was like, I can't keep doing it just because I need money, but like because I just need to pay my bills, but also because those people are great. But there was something missing in my heart. I felt it deep in my heart, something missing here. I don't feel like I want to keep doing that. I don't feel like I wanted to make, you know, I don't feel like I create this podcast to shut out the brands. I create this podcast to help people with valuable information for free. So on the side of that, which was all going on in the podcast and me, I was going through the deepest transformation in my life. I believe like my awakening uh, which is, may sound so cliche, but I like that word and I truly believe that this is true. A lot of people are zombies and they are walking this planet without realization what's really going on. My awakening started maybe like about five years ago, but in deep, my real awakening. Because then I thought it's awakening, it was just a self-awareness. Now we're talking about deep awakening. It started about two years ago, maybe two and a half. It started with a loss of really close person to me. I lost my grandmother. And then, you know, you can have a different relationship with your family members. And sometimes they're not the best ones. Uh, but I was working already on, uh, you know, forgiveness and uh, accepting my parents, my family, and my roots. I was working already on that, and that this crazy news coming that I lost my grandmother, and I was so close to her, so close. Like, even though I didn't see her for eight years because I left Ukraine eight years ago, and I couldn't come back because of that documents issues, um, I, I was in deep in love with her and I don't need to call her for that I don't need to be there for that it would be nice to be there for her but I mean like there's a type of connection that you know this person is connected to you and you connected to her when I was born everyone was saying that me is like a small version of my grandmother we have a lot of in common and even though I know her as an amazing woman I didn't know her a lot because I left my small city in Ukraine called Zaporizhia when I was uh, 20, around 21. I uh, decided to move to Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine, a big city. I left my family, I left everyone, and I was focusing on growing my career, becoming an actress. I finished the best university in Kyiv uh, to becoming a film and cinema actress. I was working in a theater in Ukraine. You may don't know all of that about me because I just in general don't like to share a lot of my biography or my true story on social media because I always was true believer that I'm here to give you valuable information uh, about nutrition, workout and fitness. But in all of that, doing the social media game for many years, I realized that this is impossible and you don't know me truly and you think i'm a robot you, you think i am not stoppable you, th you you don't get inspired by me anymore because because you don't know truth my truth of course not the universal truth but you got my point so anyways um i we were going with that so yeah so my awakening started with my lost it was a deep deep and painful loss for me. And then the funny thing enough, my mom has the birthday. It was my mom's birthday when my grandmother died. I don't know if you believe in numbers, but I do. And numbers are really magical. So my grandmother got in the hospital when it was my birthday. My birthday is on October 29. And my mom and I was so shocked. 
she died from COVID. So it's nothing new or, you know, but in that time when COVID just started, it was so scary. No one knew what's going to happen. And my grandmother died in a couple of days after that on my mom's birthday. It was significant for me and my family. And then the hardest part for me was that I cannot go back in Ukraine and just bury her body. I can't go there because of some stupid social documents issues that I'm going through in America. A lot of you don't know how I got here in the United States. And you think maybe that I was born in a rich family with a lot of opportunities. This has never been the case. I was born in a good, healthy, happy family, but in a small city in Ukraine called Zaporizhia. It's an industrial city with a lot of factories. So my life kind of was surrounded by that and everyone was thinking what she's doing, why she's going and becoming an actress. This is not even a job. No one was supporting me in that. And I am truly happy about those uh, hard but you know nice experiences because I would never be the person I am without those experiences because if you are you know if you're not sacrificed something for the life that you have you probably don't really know how truly amazing to have it so I sacrifice my relationships my family my career pretty much everything other than my love for this life that they have here right now. And then the reason I'm telling you all of this, just because I want you to know the truth about me, but also because I want you to know that even if you are in the darkest place, even if you think you don't have any opportunity, you do. You always have it. And then from any place in the world, you can reach to any dreams that you want. It's all in your mind. And you can get there just by working on yourself deeply, hardly, and believing that it's possible. And I know it is. I know it is. And I'm just giving you an example of my story that how is that possible? So I was um, working as an actress in Kyiv, capital in Ukraine, in a theater. And um, there's this small protests, small meetings start happening around the capital Ukraine, Kiev, and uh, people wasn't agreeing with whatever government, whatever president was telling that time in politics. So Ukrainians was wanted to connect to um, Europe, and, and then we wanted to sign up this connection deeply and move into direction, become uh, free European country, which is we actually supposed to, to be. But the president at that time was a little bit pro-Russian, or maybe not a little bit, maybe really pro-Russia. And he was connect, he was wanted to connect Ukraine to Russia. And uh, Russia and Ukraine has a lot of history. I'm not going to go in deep in politics right now on any type of thing, but my story is connected to this somehow. I have to at least give you a little bit of understanding what's going on behind this a full conflict that has actually become a war right now. So those small meetings in Maidan, which is like a, like a big square in Kyiv, was happening, and then one of the meetings was uh, deeply destroyed by um, Ukrainian government. They basically kick out asses of all the people who was there, and there was a small, like, group of people, maybe like, hungry people or something. But because of that, other Ukrainians next day came out to the square, and then they was wanted to show their you know, disagreement from whatever happened. So it's, it's, it's created even more aggression from the government, which is in a couple of weeks created a war between the government and Ukrainians, which is crazy, right? And all of that time I was working already in the TV um, in Ukraine. And then I was a, not so much political, 
But I had my opinions, and of course, I didn't want any people hurt. So I just was wanted to support freedom, and I was wanted to point that killing, killing, you know, anyone of civilians by police is doesn't make any sense. You have to stop to do that because we all one country, we all one family, we all connected. So I created a small video on my channel that I was to work on, unpaid, just, you know, uh, shutting down my position. And uh, little did I know that this video changed a lot of my life, a lot of people's lives and overall history. <laughs> Crazy, right? So that video was a little bit um, of just me talking in the camera with a little like a, like a small like uh, video clips from that square, crazy fights happening. And it's become so popular on YouTube. I mean, like it was crazy. Over a thousand of thousands of millions of views and the comments and then reposts. This video started to show it on the internet. I mean, like on other platforms. Then they show that on TV, people start following me and asking questions and the video worked that's why it's so popular soldiers or policemen stopped when they saw my video they put the guns down and walk away and that was crazy and um long story short because it's a really long story in a couple of months i I get prosecuted. People start following me and promise to kill me for this type of video. Or if I'm not going to create the other video where I'm supporting Russia and asking people to connect to Russia or to, to become a part of Russia, as it used to be USSR. Of course, I didn't want to do that. Of course, I was scary. Those people who were following me, I didn't even know who they were. But it was like just a really good emotional pressure on me and my family. So, um, again, long story short, um, I would have to leave my country. It's, it's get to the point that I would have to leave unless I wanted to leave or, you know, live in, live in curiosity or just hurt. I may going to be hurt. So that's why I left. And I left everything. My popularity, my theater, my tradition, my family. I didn't know English at all. Zero. Like, hi, bye. I know some of the sentence from the school, but honestly, when I get into New York and people, <laughs> people talk so fast, I couldn't pick up anything. It was crazy. It was the hardest years of my life for three years in, U in U USA, in New York, the Big Apple. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And that's when I fell in love with fitness. I was always a dancer all my life from I was six. So when I moved to America, because I couldn't talk, I started dancing just to make some money for living. And I uh, slowly but progressively moved from dancing to fitness and uh, decided to get ready for my first ever fitness bikini show, completely vegan. I don't eat meat, and a lot of you know that, some of you not, maybe you listened to me first time. I don't eat meat from I was nine years old and... Uh, uh, meat in particular was never a thing for me, but I was a big uh, cheese and dairy lover, like cottage cheese, yogurts. But as soon as I got into America, I got so, so surprised how many unhealthy foods you guys have it here and how many overweight people around so I, I quickly realized that there's something going on so I decided to study this problem what's going on in America why people eat so poorly why they are overweight and uh, who gonna stop that so I become a nutritionist 
After three years in New York, I was still trying to pursue my acting career on the side of my fitness career. So I decided to study in Los Angeles. So I moved to LA for, um, yeah, for almost two years. I used to live in LA and I finished Stella Adler acting school in Los Angeles. And then my fellow, you know, people who studied with me, if you're going to watch that, that's me. I'm back. <laughs> And I always was doing fitness. I worked in a, a late gym. I was competing. I uh, was uh, educating myself in nutrition, get certifications. I fell in love with helping people. I remember I was still pursuing my acting career. And then I got some of my clients call me and said that they were like, like, two type diabetes and then they after they work with me on a diet and nutrition and workouts they are not diabetic anymore and she was crying this client she was you know so happy and she was uh so grateful for me as a coach i remember that day when i heard that i was like almost crying realizing that this is so much more valuable for me than just to play someone in the tv this is so much more valuable than just to be an actress. Because I thought that by being an actress, I can help people to see their problems from outside so they will live better lives. But if I can truly change their lives by helping them to get healthier, and where is the matter of life or death? This is so much more valuable. I was like, that's my purpose. That's my purpose of life, not acting. I still do acting right now, just for a hobby. I still play and sometimes in movies, sometimes in the theater. But from that time, I clearly realized that this path I can go, which changed a lot. So after my, now we're circling back to what's happened in the last two and a half years. So um, after my grandmother died, a lot of things I realized that I cannot change. And there's the things that I have to work through. I have to talk to her without seeing even her body. I have to let go of the pain that I cannot be there for her. And I wasn't all these years. I have to let go of the pressure of not knowing where I'm going to live, how I'm going to survive if I don't even have social security number or work authorization card or any documents. To this day, I don't have a passport. <laughs> and it was hard to accept, but only by letting go of those things, I could truly find who I am. So in my deep awakening, I go through a lot and I found yoga. And then over the last year, I'm practicing yoga and I become a yoga certified instructor and practitioner. Right now, I'm currently doing second education, becoming a Hawaii yoga, in Hawaii yoga Institute, becoming a yoga pr practitioner in a wider range of, uh, you know, um, yoga schools and yoga styles and i realized by doing yoga that there's so much similarity in what i already do uh, yoga was just like a little piece that was missing between nutrition fitness and mindfulness yoga has all of it and this tradition this philosophy which was it's not a religion because i was confused that this is a religion because i'm christian I'm Christian, I believe in Jesus, and I'm not, you know, saying that people who are in India and doesn't believe in, in, in Christ, Jesus Christ, but there's a lot of religion now there surrounding yoga. So I thought it's a religion, it's a specific tradition, their country, they're, they're not applicable in my life unless I want to change my religion. That was a mistake. No one is talking about this, but yoga is a tradition and philosophy, which is, has roots even before religions kick in, any of the religions. Well, we're not going to go in deep at this podcast of yoga history or 
yoga philosophy, which is would be nice to do some time. But by realizing that, it's allowed me to go in deep into yoga practice like breathing exercises, pranayama, meditation, and then compare all of that with an asanas to the fitness. And then I just find so much similarity. And at the same time, I find so much missing pieces. So with all this being said, and amazing doing my career, I just created my new stage ready game plan when I helped over a thousand of people like get in shape, switch to the plant based diet. I make a decision to only work with females because I want to be specific in what I do. Just all this was created and goes so well. I created my, my app where I have all the automatization, the prices. I raise my prices. I live in freaking Hawaii. It's just beautiful and amazing place on the planet. And I can allow myself to live here. I have the love of my life, my husband who's supporting me and helping me with everything. If you, honey, listen to this video or listen to this podcast, I love you. Without you, I could never be where I am right now. I'm getting emotional. Uh, But with all of this, I was missing a piece of self-awareness and self-acceptance because I was pursuing my career with deep mind disconnection. I was telling people to do the workouts no matter what, even if they're tired, even if they don't feel like it, when in the true case scenario, they have to start from the mind. We have to find what's going on in your brain, what's going on in your life, in your soul, how you can change that before you get into the physical. Because if you go opposite, it's possible, but it's just so much harder and there's going to be a lot of obstacles on your way. So I decided to give up all of this. I stopped taking more clients. I stopped doing coaching and I take a break. I take a break which has never been the case for me. I am always was pusher. I always was completer. I always was motivator. And then this time, I like, I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't handle the pressure of my clients wanted me to give them, again, the hardest workout when I want to talk about their deep soul purposes. So here I am. After the break, where I spend a lot of time journaling, meditating, educating myself and my deep soul desires, here I am with a new podcast for you guys, where we're going to talk about self-discovery, self-awareness, deep life purpose, and all this through the body. Because we have this beautiful instrument, your body. Your soul live in it. And without taking care of that, which is your body, you cannot live in this material world. Or we're going to talk about how plant-based diet or how any diet could change your instrument. We're going to talk about how pranayama, breathing, meditation, journaling, or any type of mindful technique can improve your life or can change the way you see the problems and then obstacles. I will share all my transformation tools that I used to get where I'm where I am right now. Basically, finding my true purpose again. And then going deeper into serving you guys. Because I realize that I have a gift, not just motivate you. I have a gift to help you find your true purpose and true self-awareness 
And after that, as you discover that, I promise you, you're going to eat healthy and take care of your body with physical exercises. A hundred percent. It's worth just like that. So I don't know how long is this podcast. I didn't count the time. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just need your support. So if you feel like this is something you would listen, if you're interested in hearing more about this, about how you can transform your brain and transform your life by using some specific techniques, how you can eat healthier from the perspective of food relationships and the brain objectives that is pushing you to choose some specific foods and how you can use workouts in order to take care of your the best ever instrument which is your body if you're interested to listen of all of this on this podcast please let me know and if you like me if you're struggling if you don't know what is your true purpose in life, if you're stuck, if you think that what you do is doesn't make sense anymore, please connect to me. Let me know you're not alone. So I want to know that I'm not alone. So we are here in the same path all together. And we can support and help each other on this journey. Because I am stepping out of my comfort zone sharing all of this with you guys here just because i want you to know that it's safe space to share to grow and to develop something bigger than we are i give you one practice of this podcast that is i just did a couple days ago i do it quite a bit sometimes it's easy practice anyone can do it right now with me um so ask yourself, whatever you want in your life, like imagine you have it. Financial freedom, this is what we all want. So imagine you already have your finances. They are amazing. You don't have to worry about. Imagine you have anything you want, which is your health, right? So we have a finances and health. It's already amazing. Imagine you reach to the best ever health and finances and then ask yourself what does your soul want what does your soul feel like to do if you have your health and your finances because when you ask your question what do Aurora actually do want it's the first surface level the answer is going to be um, financial freedom and uh, health because you cannot go in deep and work on your true soul needs if your basic you know surface needs are not met it's going to be really hard but the truth is that you're may realize by going deep by kind of faking in that your financial and health needs are already perfect that your soul will tell you something that your actually can do without those resources so when i asked myself this just just a couple of weeks ago my answer was i wanted to grow my soul needs to grow and this is one of the steps that i'm taking to grow further but the second answer just straight like like not even second like continually I wanted to grow and help other people to grow. I cannot help you unless you wanted to be helped. It's just like this phrase, like, no one can save you unless you can save yourself. But I am here, can show you my example of awakening my truest potential and my deep, deep work. So you may do the same but you have to do it yourself that's kind of it deep heavy 
But that's the truth. So ask yourself this. See how it's going to take you. See how it's going to land in your life. And I really want to hear from you guys. So if you wanted to listen to Vegan Booty Talks, new version, and maybe I'm going to change the name, reach to me. Let me know. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me directly on DMs or email me. You can just leave the review at this podcast. If you listen to an Apple podcast or Spotify, whatever platform, you can always leave a review. Um, give a five star. That's going to tell me that you are wanted to listen to this. And we can get into this journey together. I love you guys. I'm talking to you, even that one, even only if, if, only if one person will open this podcast and I know it's not going to be my mom because she don't speak English at all. And it's going to be not my husband because he knows all of this. So even if one more person will listen to this and this is going to change their life, we are creating the best ever, the bigger change in this world. We are cultivating the awareness of this planet. So we are changing the lives of millions of people. Just want to let you know. So if you think this, this can be valuable for someone else besides you, please share it. Just share my podcast to someone. Let's, let's change this planet together. And if you think this is all stupid, doesn't make any freaking sense, please let me know too. If you think I'm going crazy, let me know. I wanted to know. Please save me. <laughs> okay, guys. Love you deeply. And um, hear you here soon. Or see you on my YouTube soon. Bye-bye.